Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the study of antiquity and the Middle Ages. As always, I am your host, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined once again by Dr. Rebecca Futo Kennedy. While surfing a bunch of my platforms that I'm present on as the study of antiquity in the Middle Ages, I've noticed a debate spark up again that I've seen off and on since my childhood, and that was whether or not Hannibal Barca was black. And you see arguments about the Phoenician lineages, and people are going to bring up Berbers, but it's this, I've noticed this attempt to differentiate North Africa from the rest of it. And when I say from the rest of it, it's attempting to erase the black history of North Africa away to a point as if like they were never up there to begin with already. And so this is my question. Was Hannibal the man who made Rome tremble black? As with any other question about this, right? First, let's call the, the, call the thing what it is this obsession with trying to make sure that this great general Hannibal, um, the man who makes Rome tremble, um, is a white man is, of course, the, the desire is strong. And, you know, we can go back to Dodge and sort of like the Caesar Alexander Hannibal, right, because he classifies Hannibal as one of the sort of great generals. Um, we have to claim him. But also, I think going back to this tension that I already talked about with the issue of sub-Saharan and what we mean by that sort of classification um, is this desire also to uh, for people who lay claim to um, descents from in North Africa that are anti-Black as part of the sort of history of the development of that of, of the continent of Africa and the sort of um, Arab invasion and and modern imperialism, there's a strong tendency to want to make sure we separate that. So yes, okay, obviously we have the myth of Dido um, and the founding of Carthage from Phoenicia. We also have Phoenix, the sort of the initiator of, of the um, Phoenicians in North Africa, or in even in Ethiopia, right? If we read uh, Heliodorus's novel from the third or fourth century CE, we don't know the exact date. He's got um, a, they tell the myth of Andromeda in that, um, and Andromeda, and of course we have fifth century vases of this, this is Phoenix, who's the father of Andromeda, who they're, they're white, or they're represented as, as, as Phoenician, as not black, but they're in a space that is filled with black people. So, but the, the, the crux of the story of, of Heliodorus is that the king and queen of Ethiopia are black, and they have a daughter, though, who comes out to have really white skin. I mean, she's called, she's called white because she's a, a woman, and, but she has really pale skin, and so the mother has to hide the birth, um, of this child because she's afraid that people will think that she had the child out of wedlock. But in fact, what happened is, and here you kind of get a little bit of insight into ancient medical theories. Uh, there is a medical theory called imprinting, where if in the act of sex, you are staring at something, that image can imprint onto the fetus. Um, it's something about how they understood how the eye worked, the nature of how the eye worked. And so in the story, this Black Ethiopian king and queen of Ethiopia are procreating, and she stares at a painting on the wall of Andromeda. And so the pale skin of Andromeda imprints on the child. Uh, and the whole thing ends up happy. Everybody's crying, look, mom and dad, it's really me. But in the meantime, she's kidnapped by pirates and raised by shepherds. And there's true love. It's sort of like the princess bride of the ancient world. Um, it's a really great story. Um, but what it tells us, though, is how very common this sort of idea of these mixed identities are um, in North Africa, um, that we have these stories that have people who are black and people who are not black interacting all the time. Um, and there's a reality that they could in fact be related and it's not a big deal. This is the world that Hannibal exists in, right? Um, this is the world of the Nubians and the Kushites, of the Ethiopians and the kingdom of Aksum, of um, West African Ethiopians who are obviously black, of the Garamantes, who we don't know what they look like, of the people known as the Berbers, who also, again, this is not an actual um, ethnic category. It's, it's, it it, it come, becomes one la later because it can connect to the sort of linguistic categories, but um, it's actually up in the air what it, to be called a Berber actually means. Um, and we have this sort of stew pot of Phoenicians who have settled in these places, but they've integrated and mixed with people who are already there. And as we can go back to our Herodotus, right, Black Africans are indigenous to North Africa. So we're going to have these mixed populations. Egyptians might have Black skin, um, might be Black Africans. And even if their skin tones are slightly different, we would still call them Black today. Um, and so 
is Hannibal black? Again, the question is really, can, can we make him white? Which is the one thing he's not. He could be lots of things. The one thing he isn't is white because that's not a category that they would have recognized. And it isn't actually um, one that fits. But if you look at his bust, right, we have this bust um, that I'll share with Nick. Again, that comes from Capua. Um, it was found in Italy, um, this bust of, of uh, Hannibal. Because remember, of course, the Carthaginians controlled Spain, parts of Spain. They controlled parts of Italy. They controlled um, Sardinia and Sicily. Um, if you go to Sicily, the, the history of Sicily is a sort of highly mixed African, Greek, um, indigenous, and Italian cultures. Uh, even today, um, I think they, 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 they're still not sure how Italian they are down there in Sicily, um, which I love about them. Um, but um, if you, this bust that they found in Italy of Hannibal, if you look at the bust, if we're going to say, oh, look at the physical features, he's not white. Um, but what does that mean? <laughs> because none of them are white. Um, is he Phoenician? Is he um, Berber? Whatever that means. Is he African? He's African. That we can say that with certainty. He is African. What that means beyond that um, is anybody's guess, but it actually, he's not European. <laughs> so that was one thing we can actually say for sure. My, my, whole, my whole point is, look, it doesn't matter if he's black. <laughs> we will never know, but it doesn't matter because he could be, but I know what he isn't, and he isn't European, and he isn't German, and he's not Nordic, and he's not Aryan. <laughs> he's not your people. <laughs>